December 29th, SpaceX's Dragon fired its thrusters for 19 minutes straight, pushing the entire International Space Station higher. Impressive? Sure. But there's something else happening here that almost nobody's paying attention to. NASA's Lunar Gateway Station needs to orbit the moon by 2028. And Gateway has this problem. It needs constant adjustments to stay stable. The orbit keeps wanting to drift. Thing is, NASA doesn't really have a vehicle qualified to do that job yet. Which makes me wonder, did Dragon just accidentally solve a moon problem while everyone was focused on the ISS? So let's talk about what actually went down on December 29th. Dragon's got these two Draco engines mounted in its trunk section. They burn for 19 minutes, delivering about 800 newtons of thrust to push the entire 420-ton ISS higher. And get this, SpaceX built the whole boost kit from recycled parts. The engines pulled from the Crew-8 mission. The six propellant tanks left over from 2020 abort tests. They just wrapped it together, bolted it on, and it worked. This was Dragon's fifth reboost during the CRS-33 mission. One more to go before it heads home in January. Do the math on that. Six burns over five months adds up to roughly 54 meters per second of velocity change delivered to the station. Now, why does that number matter? Gateway is supposed to launch in 2028, orbiting the moon in what NASA calls a near rectilinear halo orbit. <sighs> Great orbit gives you access to the lunar surface and deep space at the same time, perfect for Artemis missions. But NRHO orbits don't play nice. They're unstable by nature. Think about the forces acting on Gateway. You've got the moon's lumpy gravity field pulling in weird directions, because the lunar mass isn't distributed evenly. Earth's still yanking on it from 380,000 kilometers away. The sun adds its own gravitational chaos. All these forces working together mean Gateway slowly drifts off course over time. NASA's estimates? Gateway needs somewhere between 50 to 100 meters per second of delta V every year just for basic station keeping. Skip those corrections and Gateway either floats away or crashes into the moon. So who's going to do that job? That's where things get interesting, or maybe concerning, depending on how you look at it. Orion will visit Gateway, but Orion's a crew taxi. It carries just enough fuel to get astronauts there and back. You wouldn't use a passenger car to tow freight trains. Russia's progress has been reboosting the ISS for decades, but progress can't reach the moon. Europe's ATV did great work until the program shut down in 2014. Northrop Grumman's working on qualifying Cygnus for ISS reboosts, but making it lunar capable means redesigning the whole propulsion system from scratch. Blue Origins Blue Moon? That's a lander, built to go down, not for the kind of sustained burns station keeping requires. NASA's got a gap here, and the clock's ticking toward 2028. Which brings us back to Dragon's numbers. Remember that 54 meters per second over five months? Each burn delivered about nine meters per second. Scale that up to a full year, and you're looking at roughly 130 meters per second of capability. That's above Gateway's baseline requirement with room to spare. The Draco engines just proved they can fire continuously for 19 minutes, exactly the kind of sustained burn Gateway needs. The trunk mounting keeps the thrusters aligned with the velocity vector, which matters for efficiency. And maybe most important, the whole system sat in space for months and worked perfectly when called on. Real-world validation of the propellant management, the thermal control, all of it. The parallel is almost too clean. Gateway needs sustained thrust over long periods, needs precise control, needs reliability without constant resupply. Dragon just spent five months demonstrating exactly those capabilities. SpaceX is basically building Gateway flight heritage while getting paid to maintain the ISS. You could call that lucky.
I'd call it smart engineering. But let's not pretend the challenges don't exist, because they're real and they're substantial. The ISS sits 400 kilometers up. Something breaks, you can launch a fix within 24 hours. Gateways at 380,000 kilometers. Propulsion fails during a burnout there, and help is days or weeks away minimum. The vehicle has to work, period. No second chances. Then there's the communication lag. ISS operations happen in real time. You send a command, it executes instantly. Gateway has a 2.5 second round trip light delay. Doesn't sound like much until you're trying to execute a precision maneuver and you can't adjust on the fly. You need way more autonomy, better onboard guidance, systems that don't need Houston holding their hand. Radiation's another beast entirely. The ISS hides inside Earth's magnetosphere, which blocks most of the nasty stuff from space. Gateway sits out there completely naked to solar and cosmic radiation. Electronics age faster. Propellant chemistry might do weird things under constant bombardment. Materials that hold up fine at the ISS could degrade fast in that environment. Dragon's current boost kit has never been tested in that kind of radiation regime. And the thermal swings get wild. ISS cycles through Earth's shadow every 90 minutes, regular as clockwork. Gateway could spend days in full sunlight, then days in darkness, depending where it is in the orbit. Your propellant tanks need totally different insulation. Temperature management becomes this whole complex dance. These problems aren't small, but they're also not insurmountable. They're engineering challenges, not physics showstoppers. SpaceX already proved the fundamentals work. Sustained thrust delivery? Check. Reliable propellant management? Check. Long duration operations? Check. Getting it lunar ready means upgrading the radiation shielding, beefing up thermal control, writing more autonomous software, carrying more propellant for extended missions. These are improvements to a proven system, not brand new technology you have to invent from zero. And here's what makes this particularly elegant from a business standpoint. NASA's already contracted SpaceX to deliver cargo to Gateway. If Dragon can pull double duty, bringing supplies and handling station keeping in the same flight, that's incredible value. We've seen this model work before. Cygnus added reboost capability in 2018. Dragon followed in 2024. Gateway feels like the natural next step. The timeline works out too. Gateway's first pieces launch in 2028, full operations by 2030. That gives SpaceX four to six years to refine the tech, gather more ISS data, build a lunar variant. Every Dragon reboost adds to the knowledge base. How propellant behaves under different burn profiles, how thrusters degrade, how thermal systems perform, how accurate your guidance is when you're pushing a massive structure around. CRS-33 alone is generating operational data you just can't get from ground testing. Consider this angle too. NASA already gave SpaceX $843 million to develop the ISS deorbit vehicle. That mission requires sustained, powerful thrust to guide the entire station into a controlled ocean impact. Probably the most demanding propulsion challenge in human spaceflight history. If SpaceX can nail that, gateway station keeping is actually less extreme by comparison. What we're watching here is kind of fascinating when you step back. NASA needed a backup for Russian progress vehicles. SpaceX built the Dragon Boost Kit to fill that need. And in doing so, they might have accidentally created the solution to a gateway problem that hasn't fully materialized yet a capability gap that would otherwise require a dedicated development program costing hundreds of millions and eating up years of schedule. The real question is whether NASA sees this convergence and acts on it before Gateway's design locks in. Right now, the baseline plan assumes Orion handles some station keeping, Gateway's own propulsion does the rest. But dedicated commercial services could take that burden off both systems, extend their lives, give the whole program more flexibility.
Dragon could end up doing for Gateway what it's doing for the ISS. Not because anyone planned this grand vision from the start, but because the practical capability demonstration made the business case too obvious to ignore. Dragon's December burn wasn't just about keeping the ISS in orbit. It proved something NASA needs for Gateway. 54 meters per second delivered over five months, right in the sweet spot of that 50 to 100 meters per second annual requirement. Sometimes the solution to tomorrow's problem shows up while you're busy solving today's. If you got value from this perspective, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review. We dig into the technical details everyone else glosses over. <clears throat> Question for you. Do you think NASA will leverage Dragon for Gateway, or will they develop something completely new? Let me know in the comments. Before you take off, there's another video on your screen worth checking out. SpaceX just did something never seen. Beat Apollo plus shuttle combined. Shocked. Another capability hiding in plain sight. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll catch you in the next one.